Hi everyone, it's Penny Black and Jill Foster here with another PB&J card class video. And this is video 9 out of 10 for our Start Stamping video series. And this is going to be the longest, I think, of all 10 videos. So I hope you don't mind a long one. Settle in, grab a cup of something you love, and I hope you can just relax and then get some inspiration. Here is a peek at just a couple of the cards that we will be creating today. And I'm also going to take you along with my design process. And this video is really about how I like to mix and match new things with stamps and dies from my stash. And if this is your first time viewing one of the start stamping videos, the goal is to share my creative process as a professional designer to help you start enjoying your hobby with less decision fatigue, collect products that you'll use and love, and use your stash. So the first thing I do is I start selecting or gathering limited supplies. So maybe you have just gotten an order in of something you uh, a new release or a new collection or some of maybe you've gotten some of the products from our cherished collection what you do is it what I like to do is put them into a photo box if you've watched these other start stamping videos you'll see that this one is going to have a lot of mixing and matching so you see I've got a lot of different dies in here and I also have some of the Penny Black fan favorite woodblock stamps. I love that Penny Black is featuring some of these fan favorite woodblock stamps. And so I really wanted to use these along with the new floral dies. So I've gathered them all together and then I'm going to just start die cutting. I'm going to have a decisionless die cutting session. So I'll show you what dies I pulled to put in my box. And you might not necessarily think right away that these are the dies that would go along with those woodblock stamps. But if you follow this process, you can really make them work. Now, I flipped that back over so we're not looking at everything upside down. For this first envelope, I've just cut a lot of standard A2 size card panels. Then I've cut frames. So I often love to have some frames, some frame dies ready to go. And so here I am using our, let me make sure I tell you the right thing, leaf stitched frame. So this is one I've had in my stash for years. I love this die. So I've gone through my stash and pulled out a frame. I also felt like the leaf stitching would go well with sort of floral springtime cards. So I've cut that several times, stuck it back in the envelope, and then it goes into the box. Now as I die cut all these, I just had a show going in the background, and that was the only thing I was doing that day was just die cutting. And I love that. For me, that's like a mindfulness kind of activity where I can still be creative but I don't have to make any decisions. Now I also decided to use this new watering can die and I love all of the little flowers that's part and leaves that are part of that die so I've just die cut them all. I don't have any cards in mind at this point. I just have limited my products that I want to use and I'm just preparing them. I have this delicate daisies die. Again, just cut a whole bunch of those, put them in the envelope, and back into the box. If I don't use them all, that's no problem. I just keep them stored with the die, and they'll be ready for the next time I pull this out for another project. And if I decide I want something later when I'm doing the cards that I haven't die cut, I can reach for it and sort of make a in the moment decision to use that. You don't have to be tied to only what's in your box, but it gets you started. This is the Burst of Blooms die. I've cut several of those. Again, no card ideas in mind and no, um, no decisions to be made, just die cutting. That is one reason I like to die cut everything from white cardstock or uh, watercolor paper is because that way I can add the coloring and things later. I don't have to make any decisions about that before I'm die cutting. I cut this several times. This is the immense hug die. I love using this, um, these large word dies. This is a new one actually. And then we have finesse, beautiful flowers. These are gonna be really fun to mix and match with those critters. And we will also have the boots die.
Now this is also a nice design process to follow if you work in a small space. So like I can, I do, I make all my cards out of a closet. <laughs> and so I can just pull out the die cutting machine, put it on my desk, do all of the die cutting, put that away, add everything to the box, and then move on to the next thing. Now, whenever I'm doing floral springtime cards, I like to have some butterflies ready because I know I'm probably going to put them on. Two of my favorites that I reach for again and again are this one, which is the butterflies and leaves. It has that great stitching on the butterflies. And then this is the soaring die set, and it has a nice variety of sizes of butterflies, as you can see here. It also has that great circular element I've used on another video. But I just die cut lots of these and throw them into the envelope. And you can see nothing fancy. I've even tested colors of markers on this envelope and real life, I'm just going with it. <laughs> now that I've done my die cutting session, I'm going to move on to my stamping session. And I like to try and do most of that in sort of a batch stamping. At least my focal point images, I want to do sort of batch stamping. So I've got those wonderful woodblock stamps. I'm going to stamp them using onyx black ink. If you haven't pulled out your woodblock stamps or if you haven't used woodblock stamps lately, I highly recommend it. I hadn't until, gosh, our last release that came out, the um, Showered in Love release. We released some fan favorites again, and I forgot how much I love stamping with woodblock. I'm going to stamp them onto watercolor paper, but another tip is create a really simple set as you go. So using that leaf stitched frames, while I have the stamp out, I'm going to stamp some to fussy cut and I'm also going to stamp some, just really the whole thing right onto the leaf stitch framed to make some simple cards. And on those simple cards, I'm even going to stamp my sentiments while I'm doing my stamping session. So I've got that in my Misty Stamp Positioning Tool. Now, all of the um, products that I'm using, and here's a look here about at the simple set that I've stamped. All the products I'm using, the stamps, the dies, everything is listed and linked for you down in the YouTube description box below. I also have a list of all of the other supplies I'm using. Colors, papers, paintbrushes, all of that is listed and linked. Ink pads, listed, not linked, but listed for you down in the YouTube description box below. So you can see I stamped those simple set of cards and then I have a collection here just on my watercolor paper. So after that stamping session is done, now I can just start painting. And for me, my favorite medium lately has been painting actually for quite a while, watercolor. But you can do that with whatever is your favorite coloring medium. I'm going to use my Secura Koi Field Sketchbox watercolors. I find this is a really handy set, especially if you want to be mobile. So if you have everything already stamped in, stamped, then you can easily take this watercolor, your little cup and your paper towel out onto the, a TV tray or to the kitchen table. Or I had someone leave in another comment below to the RV. So you could prep things and then have it easy to do in these steps if you travel an RV. Or if you'd like to get together with friends, maybe you show up to the get together with everything stamped and your painting to do. So you can um, just relax and enjoy that coloring process. Or you have it ready for when you're gonna watch a movie and you can just paint. For me, I like to have it ready too because I don't often have a big chunk of time where I can sit down and do everything. But if I have it all stamped and I have the paints sitting out on my desk, I could sit down and just paint one image or it's enough to get me started instead of it being like oh, I want to do it but I don't want to drag out all the things this is just sitting on the desk ready to go and that helps me get started and once I get started then I usually do more than I planned on <laughs> because I enjoy it so I'm just painting these in I showed at the beginning that I like to have that woodblock stamp nearby just to get ideas for where I want to put the shading darker areas, but these stamps, the illustrations are so awesome that you don't need to do a lot of shading. If you just painted these guys in brown, they're going to look amazing because the illustration is what is so cute. And that's one thing I truly love about Penny Black is that the illustrations, whether it's elegant or cute or critters, are really high quality, that they're classic. 
They're going to look good no matter what your skill at painting is. And they're also going to look good over time. You could pull this stamp out five years from now and it's still going to be, um, it's timeless. It's going to be cute. It's going to be fun. It's going to work. So they are a good investment. So I'm just adding a love to add a little blush to their cheeks and onto their little paws and their feet. And a little pink on their nose. Definitely you can leave, and I recommend to leave areas of white. That just adds to that playful. You can still leave areas where you see the actual stroke of the brush. That is good too. I love with this flower up here, there's so many different ways you could paint it colorful. You can leave it sort of white, like date, white daisy color. You can paint this center part more of a brown and do the petals in like yellows so that they are like a sunflower. Just lots and lots of different choices and the flower is so pretty. I decided to go with it being kind of like a white daisy, but instead of just leaving it plain, I'm adding a touch of blue and gray on here for shading and I'm looking at the shading the example that's on the stamp itself to guide me there you can see I'm putting a touch of that gray on top of there a little green there on the stem and I will just continue to paint all of the images here is that simple set of cards now that they're all painted they're ready to go onto a card base and they're done you instantly now have a whole set of cards that are complete and you've used your stamps you've combined them with your sentiments I just pull those out as I go and here's a look at all of the other ones that I have painted you notice I haven't painted everything on the ones that are just on the watercolor paper because I'm not going to paint it if I think I'm not going to use it. So now is when I do a fussy cutting session. If you have exact match dies, you can do that. These ones don't have exact match dies. So I actually, if I'm just sitting down to fussy cut, I really enjoy the process. I use a good pair of Cutter B scissors. I do not worry about being perfect and I do not worry about cutting off fur. <laughs> So I just usually go right up to the body and if some fur gets cut off that is perfectly fine. It is more about enjoying the process and not stressing about the little stuff because once you start layering other things on it's fine. If you cut off a little fur, if you're cutting out butterflies, I always cut off the antennas. I never, I'm not, I can't be that fiddly. <laughs> but if you can, go for it. So I just sit, usually this is a good while the TV show is going or a movie is going activity I have. I usually put all of them in a little bowl and then I just cut them and as I finish, I put the finished ones into a little bowl. So I'm just showing you here how I don't worry about the fur and I just cut them out like that. Now once, it's, once I've cut them all, I usually take some Memento Toffee Crunch ink and an ink blending tool and a foam pad and I just very lightly will ink around those edges. And what this will do is will hide any spots like where there's some white where you didn't uh, cut perfectly and it just makes it, smooths it out just a little bit, hides any imperfections. So here is what I have cut out. There's my little bowl as I mentioned to you before and I just keep them in there as I'm cutting until I'm ready for the next step. So it might take me a couple of days to cut them out. I might nail it during a movie, um, but I can just keep that going for that fussy cutting step. Now, and as you can see, all these steps so far, very limited decisions. You're actually just getting in there enjoying things. Now I'm going to start assembling. So I have everything that's in my box and I'm just gonna play around with the elements that I've already prepared and then add the finishing touches. So what I do, I lay out all those pieces that I have fussy cut and I will pick like one die or you could lay out like all your die cuts and pull out just one critter and see where how you want to use it. And I immediately when I was cutting these out I thought I bet I could fit a little critter in a boot. And so 
I'm just playing around with how I could make that work. Maybe this guy running along the side can always change these decisions. And then I thought, oh, maybe I should add some flowers with that. So I already have them die cut. So I can just grab the ones I think would look good. Just play around with that. And for me, this is really fun. Instead of looking at a blank card and thinking, what could I do? Or looking at just one stamp and thinking, what card kind of card could I make with this? It's just a matter of rearranging and playing around with pieces that are already prepared. And usually I think I come up with a lot more creative ideas just out of accident <laughs> than if I would have thought it through and made a decision to do that. So I just kind of rearrange those and think, oh, that looks pretty good. Sometimes if I got a design, if I have a design I really like, I'll grab my phone and just snap a picture of it so that when I go back to put it back together, I can remember that. Here I'm just pulling out one of those card panels and then here's another tip, use envelopes. So once you've done that, I just put it all in an envelope and put it back into my box. So right now, all I'm doing is just playing around with the different designs and putting them into envelopes. Here I've got that immense hug die. I love that. That U, you, you can fit so many things in there. So I'm going to try and make a couple of cards with that. You can use larger images with that, like that big hedgy kind of bursting out of it, or smaller ones, like they're kind of tucked away in the U. And I decided I'm probably going to want, maybe I'll try this with that leaf stitched frames. So I put those all together and again I just put them in an envelope. That's all I had to do right now. You could easily come over during the day or maybe in the evening whenever you can get to crafting and maybe you only have 20 minutes but you could do 20 minutes worth of this and you're still enjoying your hobby. You're still getting that creative release in a way that's really manageable. I thought this guy needs to be holding something so I grabbed one of those flower dies that was set that was already cut and I love the juxtaposition of like the large flowers with the little hedgies and you'll see some more of that coming up I just think that adds to the whimsy of everything so you'll see I like to add that in there a lot and then that guy is ready for the envelope. Now I hope that this, seeing this process isn't too boring. I know this is a long video. I'd love to know in the comments what you think, if you like seeing all of this process or not. But my goal is that seeing the, the process, that the process can inspire you as well as the products and the cards themselves. But the process can also be an inspiration for you. Well, this guy was trying to decide what how could I use these? Just rearranging, no plan, just rearranging things, trying things out. Don't always get it right the first time. <laughs> and some of them evolve by the time they actually, the card is finished. Like this one, I think I even cut like a little hill for him to stand on, but when I actually make the card, I decide to not use that. Yep, I grabbed a little piece of cardstock here and I thought, oh, I'll just trim a little hill for him to be standing on and pop that in the envelope. But in the finished card, I actually don't use that. And it's okay to change your mind, but this gets you started. And there you can see, oh, I think I really like this. I'm going to snap a picture on my phone before I put it into the envelope. Next up, let's see what I'm going to work with next here. Oh yes, here's one where I loved the idea of these great big flowers and the tiny little hedgy below or the little mice. I'm just seeing which which one do I like with those. I decided on him. I also kind of felt like those flowers were kind of like poppies, so pop that in an envelope.
continuing to play around with these. You can see, like I said, don't always get it the way I like it on the first try. And for me, that's the benefit of having so many pieces just ready to go. Like, oh, that didn't work. What should I try next? Instead of if you're just working one card at a time, if it doesn't work, it can feel like you're going back to um, like ground zero. <laughs> And then here is that watering can. I thought that was really perfect with the guy, these guys. I thought I would use an extra flower with this, but it turns out I didn't need it. But I did pull in some of these little ones to fill in the bottom here. And those are part of that watering can die set. popping the leaves in. I think coming up with these different layers is really fun. Sorry about my head. <laughs> I kept thinking, how can I use this flower? but I finally had to let it go. <laughs> and then I'm just trimming a little hill for these guys to sit on. I like to have that ready in the envelope too if I think of it. And now I have a whole set of these little envelopes with the cards already planned, the decisions already made, the pieces already there, ready to go. And I can sit down, pull out an envelope, and start making the cards, which is what I am showing you here. So this is another reason this video is so long, but I thought I'm just going to show the whole thing so that you can see from beginning to end. So now here what I'm showing you is when I sit down, now I am just assembling the cards to these die cuts now that I know what critters they're going with or which ones are going together. I can start just making the cards. I add a little bit of color to the dies and I can just pull out one envelope at a time and make that card. I might have a day where I can, I'm going to spend all day and make all of them or I might just make one card that day or two but it's so easy to to do that way and you can see how you really use your products and you get to enjoy your hobby and you can mix and match with things that are in your stash that you've already bought so they don't just get used once and put away this really gets you using all the things I decided to do some bright red boots and then keep these flowers more of like a white daisy so I'm just adding some painting on here I'm using those same secure koi field sketchbook paint box paints that I use to paint in all of the critters and I did have to cut this guy a little bit <laughs> I felt a little bad about that <laughs> but just so he can fit in that boot I love that that boot die has a um, slit it's part of the die so you can pop flowers in there or like on this one a little critter and another reason I painted the die cut daisies um, the way that I did with them being white and with the yellow centers is because that's how I had painted this little critters daisies and I wanted that to all tie together. Now for these boots I did cut I had an extra one there so I'm going to glue that together just to give it some dimension. And you can see there we have that adorable little critter inside the boot. And that critter actually came from the it was one of the largest of the wood block stamps. It is the partying one, but it had a couple really little critters in there. So they were perfect. Great on the simple card where you see the um, the entire image, but also great just to use one little one. So I only painted one little one and I only cut, I think one or two little ones actually. Just another way to get more from your stamps. You can use the image in its entirety or just use one little piece of it. So I'm just assembling 
those boots and then all I did was stamp my sentiment I added some uh, I think I put some butterflies yep couple of butterflies I already had those die cut and then I did add a little hill painted a little hill for these I just cut the paper and then painted the paper and that card is complete so we'll move on I've grabbed another envelope from my box and here is one of those little hills that I just trimmed hand trimmed and I've painted that and I'm adding some foam tape on there. I've got my little mice. And I'm just looking where I want those positions so I can add my sentiment. I'm gonna put some foam tape up above and then the part that will be sitting on the hill will just be some glue. Making sure I'm leaving room for the sentiment. And then these are those little flowers. When I painted them, I put them on a little piece of painter's tape and then I just kept them there until it was time to assemble the card. That makes it much, much easier. And I'm putting some sort of on the hill and then some behind the hill. And that just gives even more dimension. This is a pretty simple card, but by doing little things like that, it will give it more dimension and make it look more finished. I'm just gluing on some leaves here. You can see tucked in at varying heights and in varying places on the card. And then there's the watering can. That die is super versatile. I have another video that's part of this start stamping video series featuring that and also those boots that you saw. So be sure to check out. I'm going to try and remember to put these all in a playlist for you. So be sure to check out the playlist. If you this is the first one or you haven't seen them all, you may want to check them out see lots of different ways to use the products. And there is that finished card. Once again, I've grabbed another envelope. I painted up the flowers. I went super simple on this one, and I really had fun just having a little bit of the hedgy peeking out. So I put those on using foam adhesive, and then I'm just flipping it over to trim off the parts that are hanging off. And I think this actually gives these hedgies like a very modern look. So it's cutesy and fun, but it takes them just a little bit more of a modern style card. Just all I added there was my sentiment. Now this is the card where I've got the big large die cut flowers and then the tiny little hedgy below which just makes me happy. <laughs> and I did cut and trim just a little bit of a hill there. You can see I was not going to cut out all those fussy cut all those grass blades so fussy cutting doesn't have to mean difficult cutting. <laughs> you can be selective about what you decide to cut out if you're going to fussy cut some images. These have just been painted using those Sakura Koi Field Sketchbox watercolors and I'm putting them down with some foam tape and then just tucking that stem behind. Just playing around with where I want that to go and how it works with the other ones. I really wanted to have three. I just like working in threes and found a way to do that. And then I will just tuck that stem trim that and then just tuck it behind. And then I'll flip it over and trim off any excess. And I stamped the sentiment and added a couple of those butterflies that were already in the envelope waiting to go on a card. All right, we'll pull out another envelope. This actually ended being one ended up being one of my favorite cards. Very clean and simple. But um, just a tip, if you're doing a very clean and simple card, don't be afraid to have part of your images, whether it's die cut or 
stamped extending beyond the edge of the card. It just gives it a um, sort of a more exciting composition. It looks more finished and it just looks, it's really fun to do. So it doesn't all have to fit within the size of the card. You can make it and then trim off the excess. And instead of painting all these flowers and stems individually, I just went with a wash of one color. So they're there, but they're subtle. And even though it's just a little bit of a hedgy peeking out, still the star of the show. And then just to pull up that uh, orange color from the flowers, I added it to one of those butterflies and um, added that up at the top trim off the excess and then all that is left is to add the sentiment. Now you can see I'm just working on panels of cardstock. I like to do that and then when I'm all done I can attach these two card bases. Then I don't smear any paint or ink onto the card base. Alright I hope you're still hanging in there with me that this hasn't gotten too long for you. Here is that immense hug die. I did go ahead and paint that just for some variation in color. You could also cut it from colored cardstock. That could be part of your assembling is going, oh, I want to have multiple layers like I'm doing here for dimension. So I'm putting like three of them together. But if you'd rather just add that, go cut that one top layer out of colored cardstock, you can always go do that at any time. Just because the die cutting session was first doesn't mean when you go to assemble things that you can't go over and add things or cut things, but the majority of it is done and at that point you've started and so it's easier to keep that momentum going and go do a little extra die cutting if you want. This I think might be one of my favorites. I don't know. I think I said that already about another card. I'd love to know which one of these cards is your favorite or if there's a particular stamp or die that you love, leave a comment down below. I would, I just love seeing what, what's catching your eye, what gets you inspired. I'm gonna give this little guy a flower to be holding. So he's coming along to whoever gets this card with a flower and a big hug. And then I did decide I just needed a little bit more. So from that watering can die set, I pulled a few little flowers and leaves. Like I said, that's a super handy die set. <laughs> this guy actually would look really cute popping out of the watering can. One of the little hedgies popping out with some flowers. I'm going to layer up a couple of these. This also just adds one more color. I was... Um, very monochromatic so I like adding just a little touch of yellow on here just to brighten things up. And then I think the green leaves tie into that green stem and leaf on that flower that he's holding and just kind of move that color throughout the card. And then that sentiment that is stamped, that is from our huggable stamp set. That's an older stamp set, again mixing and matching with stash to create the cards, but it's perfect with that immense hug die. Sometimes all you need is a hug. I like having those sort of uh, secondary sentiments to tie into that large die cut one. And that card is complete. There's still more. We've got <laughs> another giant hug coming your way. I've already assembled those multiple layers of that die cut word hug. I just again do that for extra dimension. I think that's easier to do than adding like foam tape behind all those um, thin pieces of the letter. I glued this guy in more as a peekaboo. So I glued him down and then just trimmed off the extra that was sticking out behind the U. Fussy cutting, I wasn't um, going to cut in between that little stem and all that. So when I fussy cut this out, I just cut the flower off and then I could just add it in when I wanted to. And to this card I just added some butterflies for a pop of color and again use that huggable uh, sentiment stamp set with it. So let's take a look at all of the cards now. Here are those very simple cards. So remember we stamped those as we were doing our stamping session and so we have these just very simple set but I love them I think I like them just as much as the layered cards 
and you can see from this process we end up with a lot of cards ready to go at the end. I did add a little die cut here on this one just for a little extra something I had it left over and a couple of butterflies on here. And then here is a look at the um, more layered cards. It's a really fun set. Great to have in your card stash to send out or you could give this whole set to someone as like a gift of then they would have them to mail out. I love seeing all of them together. It's such a satisfying feeling when you follow this process and in the end you have this lovely collections of cards and you know that you've really enjoyed your hobby, hobby and enjoyed your supplies that you have invested in. Got a couple more here trying to make room within the camera screen <laughs> for them all. I think my favorites are the blue hug and the um, daffodil one where the hedgies coming up from the bottom, those two on the left, but I'd love to know what your favorites are. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our YouTube channel. You can also connect with Penny Black on Facebook, Pinterest, YouTube, as well as Instagram, our website and blog, and everything is linked for you down in the YouTube description box below. Happy stamping!